Hello and welcome to Prom Praise Together 2021. <laughs> Well, it's an absolute joy uh, to be joining you in your homes this evening. We are live from All Souls Langham Place in central London. My name's Michael Andrews, and it's an absolute joy to conduct the All Souls Orchestra. And it feels so good to be back in this room together after so many months apart as an orchestra. As I've been chatting to lots of the musicians over the last week, the number of people that have said, it has felt really emotional to be back together again. Just like that Wren Collective song said, it feels good to be together. So we hope that wherever you're watching from this evening, however you're watching, that the message of togetherness, of God's message of togetherness, would come through so clearly through this evening's programme. God's love in Jesus Christ and how that transforms our love for one another. Well, without further ado, I'm going to introduce my co-host for the evening, worship leader, singer, songwriter, educator, inspirer, and a fantastic co-host. Let me introduce you to Geraldine Latty. Geraldine Latty, everyone. Oh, thank you, everybody. And thank you, Michael. And um, let me add my welcome to you all. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. And I know that some of you may be in lockdown still or facing challenging life issues even this week. Or you may be, as Michael said, watching by yourself or out in this glorious sunshine with others having a barbecue. So wherever you are and whatever you're facing, please know that we are so honoured that you are able to be with us tonight. And do please take the time to write in the chat. Let us know where you're watching from around the world. Let us know the music or the songs that you feel connected to. Even let us know what's on the menu tonight. But just keep connected with us as we go through our evening with which a number of world premieres, oh yes, oh yes, promises to be a rich experience of music and song, as we are joined by Noel Robinson, Joanne McGahn, Rend Collective, as you've just heard, Matt Redman and others, and not forgetting, of course, the glorious All Souls Orchestra behind me now. And so, Let's encourage our hearts with this line from our first hymn. People and nations, take your part. That's you, that's me, together. And to lead us in this hymn of praise, would you please welcome Joanne McGahn and the All Souls Orchestra as we join our voices together from all around the world to sing All Creatures of our God and King.
Wow, wow, that was wonderful. Thank you for singing with us that great hymn of praise. And now it gives me great pleasure to introduce our next guest this evening, Noel Robinson. Noel is no stranger to the gathered worship scene as a songwriter, worship leader, TV presenter, a gifted guitarist and producer, just simply an all-round inspiration in this country and around the world. Known for his quick wit and fun and laughter that he brings, but he's also known for his heart and perceptive concern for drawing the nations together in praise of our God. Now this is echoed in lines from his first song. We were strangers from different walks of life with no future and no hope in sight. But Jesus is the hope of mankind. So let's welcome Noel now as he leads us tonight in his first song, One Hope, One Faith. By which we are saved, what purpose, what mind? Jesus is the hope of mankind. We were strangers from different walks of life, with no future and no hope inside. But the Savior came to set us free. is the hope of mankind more in darkness you have brought the light you have given the truth to me I am a child trust in Oh, one purpose, one mind. Jesus is the hope of mankind. One hope, one hope, one faith. One Father by which we are saved. One purpose, one mind. Jesus is the hope of mankind. Say one hope, one hope. One faith, together we stand. One hope, one hope, yeah. in you we stand. One church, one faith, together we
outrageous love you poured out a rage love on me outrageous love you gave your life for all to see poured your love on The cross stands tall, showing your paid love. The sacrifice so pure, pay for me so undeserved. Love of my the ocean, pulling over me. That's the measured bound. Love will set me free. I'll bring you just love. Poured out a rage, just love on me, outrageous love. You gave your life for all to see. Oh, poured your love on me. Redeem and forgive. I am healed and restored. And I would gain such grace, so amazed and standing on. Now you will resurrect it, see it out, heaven's wrong. Christ the hope, all in love, your love is set us free. Love overflow, love overflow. Say, His love is overflowing. The sound of heaven pouring. Rivers of living water. Love overflow, love overflow. Say, His love is overflowing. The sound. Robinson, everyone. Noel Robinson. Thank you so much, Noel. Well, don't you love the message of that song, the outrageous love of Jesus, that he would die on the cross to bring us, people like me and you, into relationship with the creator of the world. Well, in a moment's time, I'm going to hand over the hosting duties to some members of the orchestra, because one of the pieces that we're about to enjoy is a special tribute to a very much loved member of the All Souls Orchestra, Peter Hart, 
who passed away due to coronavirus at the height of the COVID-19 pandemic last year. Pete came to faith at All Souls. He joined the All Souls Orchestra when he was a student in London. He heard the gospel, the good news of Jesus, preached here week after week, and he decided to put his faith in Jesus Christ. And over the last year, I've been stunned by the example of Pete's family, the faith and hope that they have found in knowing Jesus during one of the toughest seasons of life. The reality is, is that Christians don't think that life is easy. It can be extremely tough. But the next hymn that we're about to sing actually weaves those themes together because it talks about the harshness of life sometimes. But it says that we face it with a shield and defender, with someone who can be our righteousness, with someone who can help us to face the storms and tumultuous moments of life, the deepest valleys and the highest peaks. Bang in the center of Sibelius's epic tone poem, Finlandia, we find these words. And as we go towards the final verse, verse four, I love the way that it expresses Christian hope. It talks about entering through the gates of dazzling splendor to spend eternal days with God's family and God himself together. So, without further ado, let me welcome back Joanne McGahn, our All Souls Choral Quartet and the All Souls Orchestra for Finlandia.
I can remember exactly when I heard about him catching COVID because I wrote about it in a journal and it was on the 14th of April. His very brave and lovely daughter Lauren put updates um, about what was happening to him. We were getting text messages coming through. Uh, we have a really good prayer chain within the orchestra and within All Souls. And I got a text message saying, he's caught COVID. I remember us all praying for him um, because we knew he was really seriously ill. I knew that he was a paramedic. I knew he was putting himself in, in the path of danger. My memories of Pete are mostly from when we were on tour. Um, in Scotland or Ireland and he was always at the centre of um, all the fun. We formed the, the fellowship group after the Scottish tour so we've got great memories of studying the Bible together for many years. He was my godfather so he really kind of showed that care and compassion and looked after me and my family. He was a very very welcoming guy. It's a bit strange coming to play in an orchestra where you don't regularly see the people and, and he was always really friendly and we always chatted. It really brought it home, the, the, the fact that people were sort of fighting for their lives. Um, it's all very well hearing it on the telly and news, but actually when you know somebody, um, it, it makes a big difference. But we knew lots of people who had COVID at the time. We knew that he was probably one of the most seriously ill of the people that we knew. But the, the fact that we, we weren't able to see anyone and we couldn't get in touch and other than a message saying we're praying for you or something, we couldn't really do anything else. Well, it was rather difficult and sad to know that he had picked up the virus, but I guess all, everything is in God's control and we don't understand a lot of things, but it, it's in his hands. I think I have had a chance to grieve mainly because I was able to go to the hospital where he worked and take part in a memorial service for him. I was able to play and that I think was a significant part of the process of grieving. Because he was always in the orchestra, this is the first time really we've played since he died. Um, and so even today at one point I kind of look back expecting to see him there um, smiling away and uh, yeah he wasn't there. I think with the orchestra coming back together, this is the time we'll grieve. We'll grieve that loss while we celebrate the life. I found, yes, my, my faith has helped um, because, you know, that the, there is a certainty that, that God is watching out for us, um, and even though um, things are not nice and neat. You know, Pete lost his life to COVID as so many tens of and hundreds of thousands of people did in this country and millions around the world and, and still do. Um, so it brings it home, but um, trusting that God, you know, is, is looking after you and, and actually I, I don't have to worry, you know, God knows when I'm going to die. I think of that verse um, in Romans 8, it's always been a favourite verse of mine, uh, neither death nor life nor angels nor demons can separate us from the love of God and I, I think that we need to hold on to that even when it's difficult. Um, I miss him a lot, he um, is the best godfather in the world, always there for us, I um, can't really believe he's gone and his family are so strong and amazing and credit to them. And I remember very very clearly the last time I saw him with his family and I, and I just sort of tongue in cheek said to him I'll, I'll see you in heaven if not before. And uh, that's it. I had that memory when we were talking about what piece did we want to play. And I thought, actually, that photograph of him with that massive cheeky grin on his face wearing the Superman hero uh, T-shirt was just so poignant. For us, I think that is just Pete all over.
Isn't it wonderful to see that even while we've been separated and isolated, we've been able to find a way to bring the orchestra together in this musical expression. I found it so moving hearing some of those stories of faith and of remembering such a profound moment. So thank you once again to everyone who helped to make this momentous recording possible. Now, every other year, we would usually be at the Royal Albert Hall for a special event called Prom Praise for Schools, which welcomes thousands of children to hear the Bible brought to life through music, lights, drama, and dance. So Michael, obviously we couldn't do that this year. So can you tell us what actually happened? Yeah, well, we would usually be at the Royal Albert Hall, as Geraldine said, and so we thought, well, we've got to do something. We can't not have prom praise for schools in 2021. So we asked some of our technical geniuses. We asked Mark Ratcliffe and Peter Desmond, could you create a massive virtual stadium and put a thousand school children in there with a full orchestra and a large virtual audience. And they said, no, we can't. No, they didn't. They said, yes, we can. And so we're so grateful. We're so excited to share what we're about to share with you because if there's one group of people that have faced the last year with real tenacious resolve, it is schools. It's teachers having to teach on Zoom, parents juggling everything else on top of childcare, and children never imagining being apart like they've been over this last season. So Jamie Sperling and I set about to write a new song which would express the hardships that children have experienced over the last year and then to share what Christians believe about living life with Jesus at the centre. So, all those watching, especially all of you that were involved in this project, we are excited to share it with you. So grab your aunt and uncle, your mum, your dad, your granddad, your grandma, your dog, your cat, your pet snake, because it's time to finish our first half by running off to the Prom Praise for Schools Stadium to hear the Prom Praise for Schools Mega Choir 2021. <laughs>
I was a music student in London and I came along to All Souls here one evening and was stunned to see an orchestra playing in worship. To hear it in the church context just totally transformed my world in that moment and I just said, I've got to join this family. All Souls Music is an amazing family of hundreds of musicians from across London and indeed from across the UK and even around the world. We want to share the full message of Christ that it will dwell richly in people's hearts and one of the most amazing ways to do that is to use the gift of music. It is an enormous melting pot. Everyone is welcomed with open arms and equally and viewed as a contributor. Some are professional, some like me are, are very part-time now. I'd say that it's, it's just always a, a great group to, to play with and invite friends along to play with as well. I've had the profound privilege to work with All Souls Music, the All Souls Orchestra on many occasions. Every time, it's such a privilege to, uh, to work with a Christian orchestra. The experience you get of working with them as you stand on a stage, there's a sense of everyone is connected, not just through the notes, but their hearts are connected to the music that they play because that's the unique thing about this orchestra, that they're, they're believers. So this brings alive in a bigger way your music. When everybody is in the same heart and you know, with the same feeling, there's nothing like worshiping the Lord, you know, with, uh, especially with music and with your talents. Being part of the community of All Souls Choir is really important and the things that we're singing, the emotions that come out of it, come out more with the people that I'm around. As a ministry, we, um, we pray together, we worship together, we, we make music together and we reach others with the gospel. Um, together. We worship here at All Souls in central London, but our heart and our longing is to go out of these four walls, to resource the wider church and to share the good news through joyful music. There's quite a variety uh, of events. Prom Praise is probably the headline, the Prom Praise in the Royal Albert Hall, of course, but there have been a number up and down the country in cathedrals, in concert halls. One of the events that we hold every other year is called Prom Praise for Schools and we welcome school children from across London to the Royal Albert Hall. Prom Praise is, is, um, it's an event I think that um, most people um, would not easily forget. It absolutely, what's the word, knocked our socks off. I mean it was, it was unbelievable. We were just surrounded in sound and it was sound of praise to God. We want to share the gospel with people that have never heard it through the gift of music. And we also want to partner with other Christians around the world in worshiping God through vibrant, hope-filled music. It's not just, you know, Christian songs that specifically tell the Christian message, but it's all of the uh, music and arts. Whether it's classical, whether it's contemporary, whatever it is, the important thing, if it's good music, it touches people and quality lifts people. We want to share the Lord's love and, and His grace and, and we just find that Prom Praise is an amazing opportunity for all of that. Could you imagine a world without music? You know, we're surrounded by it day by day and I really believe it is God's great gift to us. My first wife who was suffering from early onset dementia she was only in her mid-fifties when she was diagnosed, and yet music touched her. And while she was desperately ill, we, st we still came to one or two of the Christmas praise concerts because she so much enjoyed coming. When she sat down and watched singing hymns, it, it uh, brightened her up. We really see All Souls as being this creative hub, this creative home for Christian artists where they can use their gifts to worship God here and then go out of the church building to impact London, to impact the UK, and even to share the gospel message with the world. I feel that this is the, the tool that the Lord gave me to worship Him. It's what I was called to do. What I do is part of my ministry, is part of what gives me joy, and is the way that I can thank Him and rejoice in everything He has done in my life and everywhere. We want to bring color to the world. 
And in this color, I think we would like to find expression uh, of God's character. So obviously this past year, uh, nothing's been in person, so, but, but Prom Praise was online. We were able to send out the link to so many around the world that uh, um, you think, wow, that's a, not a bad thing. So let's celebrate. Yes, there are hard things going on in the world. It's a challenging time for us all at the moment, but there is a fundamental thread of hope and good news running right the way through. God's ways never change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And that goes for whether there's a global pandemic, whether things are hard for us financially, whether there's illness in the family, but his ways never change. That is something to celebrate and a message that we all need to hear, especially in difficult times. Looking back to where All Souls Music has come from, the legacy that was built under Noel Tredinick, the previous director of music, is just amazing. And I think it gives a platform to move forward, combined with what has been learned through the pandemic and the way that the ministry has been able to reach hundreds of thousands of people that we could never have dreamed of ever reaching before. Even as we gather back together at the Royal Albert Hall and we host concerts again and we gather together in person, we still want to be able to share those things online, to reach out on YouTube and social media in a whole new creative way moving forwards. We love to encourage um, music students to come and join, join the orchestra. And if they would like to explore the faith, come to a concert, come to um, an event and see what it's all about. What is all this hype about? Why are people um, excited about this? If you're an artist and a musician that loves Jesus or even could support that Christian cause, then we're looking for you. If you're an organization that would love to have our musicians come, get in touch with us. You can play a part in this ministry, whether you are a musician or, or you're someone who loves to sing songs of worship or you feel like you can't even sing at all. There are so many ways to partner with us and to help us to reach out to the four corners of the world. It's evidently a hugely costly event, both in terms of time and effort and money to put on an event like Prom Praise, whether it's live in the Albert Hall or a recorded event and, and linking in with artists from all over the world. So you can join All Souls Music through supporting what we do. Being a partner of All Souls Music is so much more than giving a charity donation. That just minimises what it is. It means you can be part of the potential, the story going forward. The scripture that springs to mind is like everything that hath breath Praise the Lord. And this is what all souls have modelled so beautifully. Let's give so that we can continue to share our hope together. Give together. Create something new together. Share the good news together. Partner together. Well, we're still in our interval and uh, it's a great chance for me just to say uh, welcome back to all of you that are watching and uh, that message of hope that we love to share through music that you've just heard about, you can help to support us to make more evenings like this happen. And one of the ways that you can do that is to give this evening. We've wanted to make this concert freely available to everyone, especially given the last year and the financial challenges that many people have faced. But if you are one of those people that perhaps, you know, haven't bought that chai latte on the way into work in the last year or haven't been buying that season ticket to London Waterloo, then please, 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 I'd love to ask you to consider uh, giving the cost of a ticket price this evening to help us to pay for events like this and to make sure that we can continue to share hope through music. So there's two numbers that are going to appear on your screen right now and uh, if you're in the UK you can donate via text message either five pounds or 20 pounds. We would love you to consider giving a donation just to help us to continue sharing hope through music.
And if you're around the world and you'd love to support us, then you can visit our website, allsoulsmusic.org slash donate. There you can give a one-off donation, or you could consider becoming a monthly partner. We'd be so grateful for any donation that you could make this evening to help us to continue making music like we've done this evening. Well, Michael, we are just about to hear the overture to one of my favorite musicals, West Side Story. And I know that as um, you were putting the program together, you had some reflections on how some of the music expressed separation and, and division. Do you want to talk about some of your ideas? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the program's called Prom Praise Together, and mm. I was trying to think of a piece that really showed separation and mm. the way the world's not meant to be. And while we've been rehearsing with the orchestra over the last few weeks, I've been saying, God doesn't like the ending to West Side Story right, yeah. because God doesn't like the division that there mm. is in the world, the brokenness mm. that there is between people. So you've mm. got this Puerto Rican gang and this New York gang and mm. two people fall in love and they're meant to be together and it just can't mm. happen. Well, that's like our relationship with God. <laughs> it's meant to be something that's beautiful. It was created to be something wonderful, but mm. we go our own way, we, we reject him and he but the amazing thing is, Come on. the story of the gospel does not end like West Side Story because right. he doesn't like the ending. The ending of the gospel <laughs> story is that we can be in relationship with God. You could preach this, right? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but I think the orchestra Time are going to gonna go. need you. Um, uh, so we'll let you go. Thank and you. thanks for all that you have been doing you, so Geraldine. far. Thank You're you. so welcome. And to, to those of you joining, our, joining us, there is more to come in our second half with more of Rend Collective and Matt Redman. And we're also going to be hearing from Krish Kandaya, who was our speaker tonight, is bringing a particular insight about how the gospel can bring us together, can bring reconciliation. But first, I'm joined by Charlie Screen. Hello, Charlie. Hi, Geraldine. Thanks for joining us. And no, it's great you're here. Oh, thank you so much. And I hear that you are the new rector here at All Souls. And I'm wondering in this last season when there's been lots of talk about isolation and loneliness, what you would um, think about what togetherness might look like in this, in this season. Yeah, thank you. It, um, it's so nice to have the orchestra here, to have people here. I haven't Isn't heard it? you sing yet. Is that coming? <laughs> That's coming up, but yeah. It, but to, and, yeah, to, to hear the music but not be able to sing, it's been so sad not mm. to get together as church mm. and j just not to see family, not to mm. see people that we know, that we love, mm. uh, not to be able to speak, uh, mm. to speak about Jesus, to mm. uh, share our hope, share our love with people. Mm. But soon, mm. soon, I hope, yeah, uh, I soon we'll be singing. And it, it's just so great to have a foretaste of that here yeah, this, yeah. this evening. Yes, well, thank you so much for joining us. As you can hear, the orchestra are tuning up they're and getting, ready. they're nearly ready. So we are gonna have to uh, finish just, or pause our conversation just now. But let us uh, move on and join Michael and the wonderful All Souls Orchestra as they play now for us the overture from West Side Story.
everybody, I'm Gareth. I'm Chris. And we are some of the lads from Rent Collective. It's fantastic to be with you. You know, what a crazy year it's been, eh, Chris? Absolutely crazy. But it's nice that we're back together again. We're together. Yeah, look at us. Together, we're better. We Stronger. don't even have to be six feet apart. This is like one and a half feet. Yep. <laughs> Zero feet. Well, you know, that's because we're vaccinated. So that's okay. right. We can do this kind of thing. <laughs> it's, been a, it's been a crazy year. We have missed getting in front of people, leading people in worship. You know, even uh, the year before, we were seeing thousands of people give their lives to Jesus. And it just feels like this last year has been really hard work. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, worship music doesn't even work whenever there's no one there. It's not really for listening to. It's actually for <laughs> participating in. It's about the presence of God with the people of God. It's not about just making signs by yourself. Totally. And, you know, Scripture talks about restoring the year that the locusts have stolen. And I'm just really excited to see what God's going to do in the future. Really excited to see when we get back together. So let's go, church. Let's build the kingdom of God. We've got a free runway to do that in 2021, 2022, um, and beyond. So let's build this kingdom here. Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray. Unveil why we're made. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope like wildfire in our very souls. Holy Spirit, come invade us now. We are your church. We need your power in us. Your kingdom first, we hunger and we thirst, refuse to waste our lives, for you are our joy and prize, to see the captive hearts released, the hurt, the sick, the poor.
everyone at Virtual Prom Praise. It's Matt Redmond here. It's such a joy to get to worship with you today. I love it that we get to bring our instruments and our voices together another time to worship Jesus. And I love that the people of God have been doing that throughout the ages, joining together, making some noise, making some music for the King of Kings. So wherever you are today, that's what we're doing. Join in like you always would, uh, whether you're in a, a small group or a watch party or um, just in your home. And we're all together in this today for the glory of Jesus. And this song upon him is a song to the Savior. As a, as a songwriter, always trying to find fresh ways, uh, unique ways, new ways to sing about uh, the amazing um, act of the cross. And, and this is a, another one. Upon, upon a hill, there's a Savior. And upon that, that day, we see the perfect love. And upon his head, there's a crown of thorns. Upon his heart, there's a broken world. And um, we're going to pour our praise upon him together today. Upon a hill, a perfect Savior, upon that day, the greatest love, the punishment that should have fallen on us, upon Him, upon Him, upon His head. transgressions upon him upon him Christ has died we are forgiven and Christ alive we are the risen and he shall come again praise the King praise
Hi everybody, my name is Krish Kandaya and it's a delight to join you this evening for Prom Praise Together. I love the fact that people from all around the UK and indeed all around the world are joining us tonight. That really fits with my identity because I consider myself an international person. I was born in England, but my father was born in Malaysia and my father's father was from Sri Lanka. My mother was born in India, but her father was Irish. That puts me in all sorts of trouble when it comes to the Olympic Games or the World Cup or even the cricket. But I love the fact that tonight we're coming together, coming together from different cultural and ethnic backgrounds to praise Jesus. This theme of togetherness is really needed right now. Our world is splintering and fragmenting in all sorts of ways. We see cultural and racial and ideological and political differences splintering our society. But this is something that the Christian gospel and indeed the Christian church has something to say about. I want to tell you a story. My mother, as I told you before, was born into a mixed race family. And because her skin was too white for one side of the family and too brown for the other side of the family, she was put into an orphanage. She was considered socially unacceptable. My mother experienced firsthand the power, the grotesque power of racism, xenophobia and hatred. But a grand aunt in the United Kingdom heard about my mother and brought her from India to England and gave her a safe space to live. And as she grew up, my mother decided she wanted to give something back to society. So as a teenager, she began to train to be a nurse. And she trained in Brighton at the local hospital there. But the problem was, because my mum had brown skin, some of the patients didn't want her to touch them. She experienced racism even as she was trying to serve wider society. People used to call her name. Sometimes she had a banana thrown at her in the street. Some clever people decided to tell her to go black home. But my mother, well, she fought a one-woman resistance campaign to this hatred and division in society. On a Friday night, she'd cook up a huge vat of curry and rice, and anyone who felt like they didn't fit in, well, they were welcome at my mother's house. She offered an oasis of compassion and grace in a minefield of xenophobia and hatred. And for me, hearing that story growing up, it gave me a picture of what the church is supposed to be. You see, as Christians, there's something that brings us together that's even more powerful than my mother's amazing curry and rice. That's the love of Jesus. The love of Jesus that breaks down the barriers that divides our society. You probably know the most famous verse in the Bible is this, John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved middle-class white people. No, that's not how the verse goes, is it? For God so loved the world. Every single person on this planet, whatever their ethnic background, their cultural background, their age and stage, uh, their wealth, their training, their education, every single person on this planet is loved by God. Not everybody has responded to that love as we ought to have done, but God has love for the world. And the church's job is to manifest that love in word and deed. That's why the two greatest commandments are that we love the Lord our God with our heart, soul and mind, but also that we love our neighbour as ourselves. We're supposed to pass on that incredible boundary-breaking love of God to others as they're in need. For me, when I became a Christian, it was that welcome of God into his family, that God wanted to take me home, that Jesus had gone to prepare a place in his father's house for me and for you because there's many rooms. It was that invitation, that welcome, that it didn't matter about my background or my sin or my brokenness. God wanted to repair me and help me find a space in his family. 
And so now the church wants to offer that to the world. The church is supposed to be a taste of things to come. At the end of the Bible, there's this amazing picture that gathered around the throne of Jesus are people from every tribe and tongue and they worship Jesus as the Lamb of God who died for the sins of the world. And so friends, if you're watching this and you're a Christian, what should be your response? We've been singing together and it's beautiful that we've been singing in harmony, each one bringing something different, a different tone, a different cadence and yet coming together to make something beautiful. Well, that's what we're supposed to be doing as the church and inviting others to experience it. Look around your church. Is it demonstrating the togetherness of the gospel? Are all people welcome in your church? Are there all the nations represented? Are there people from different economic backgrounds represented? Is the love of God, the supernatural sociology of the gospel being demonstrated? But if you're someone exploring the Christian faith, maybe you think it's not for you. Well, I want to tell you, no matter where you are in the world, whatever you've done, whatever your background, Jesus Christ offers you a welcome. It was he who said that God loved the world and it was him who died on the cross in order to make it possible that you and I and everyone else can have our sins forgiven and we could be welcomed into the family of God. Friends, what an incredible message that we have, a message of hope to a world that's divided, to a world that needs to know that God loves you, me, and everyone else on this planet. It's been a privilege to spend time with you this evening. I pray you may know in your life, in your family, in your community, the incredible love of God that brings us together. Thank you.
Christians are never alone. Even if you are at this moment watching and you're the only one in your house, we can pray with confidence to our Father. I'm going to read a verse from the end of the book of Revelation. Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away. Let's pray together. Our almighty heavenly Father, after a year full of tears, death even in the orchestra here, mourning and pain, after that year we thank you for our hope in Jesus Christ. Thank you for the day when you will dwell with us, your people, Thank you for that great gathering from every tribe and tongue together with you 
together with each other through the death of your son. And after a year where we have been driven apart, kept apart, we cling again to the cross where the blood of Jesus brings near those who were far away. Our sin made us strangers without God and hostile to each other. But in Christ you forgive, you reconcile, you bring together. So we pray, loving Father, that we may know the love of God that brings us together. And we ask for your mercy, your strength, your help as we live in this world of tears and division, as we wait for the return of your Son. Help us trust, help us forgive, help us endure, help us bring people together, help us stand against hate and division and racism, help us serve and heal and reconcile. Help us speak, speak of our joy, our trust, and the message of hope to a divided world in Jesus Christ until we see him and he will wipe every tear from our eyes together. And we ask all this with confidence in your goodness, your love, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.
<laughs> Geraldine Latte and Noel Robinson. Let's give them another round of applause. <laughs> And before Geraldine and Noel, we were joined by Joanne McGann once again singing O Divine Redeemer and You'll Never Walk Alone. Now, one of the great jobs in my role as a conductor of this orchestra is that we receive in the music offices here at All Souls Music many notes of encouragement and many stories. Now, last year this concert has now been watched over 140,000 times, last year's virtual prom praise. But I think the thing that really sticks with us the most are those personal testimonies of how music and hope together make an impact in people's lives. I'm thinking of uh, one of the nurses that wrote to us in March last year and said that the songs that she'd been listening to from Sunday services from here at All Souls and from the different things that we were doing with the orchestra online had stuck with her on those wards as she treated patients each day. I think of others who've told me they've attended prom praise concerts and they've turned their life around. They've given their life to Jesus. They've said the message of hope turned their life around. Our vision here is to combine music and hope together because can you imagine a world without music? Can you imagine a world without hope? Well, our mission and our vision is to share those two things together through concerts like this evening. And I really do hope you've enjoyed this evening. It's been so much fun reading through all of your comments in the breaks during all of the music. Thank you for interacting and thank you for joining us this evening. We really wanted to make this concert free in a year that we know so many people have faced financial difficulty. But if you are one of those people who perhaps have been, not been buying that chai latte on the way into work in the morning, or you haven't bought that season ticket into London Waterloo, which goodness knows how much it costs, then you might be wondering, well, how could I give something to help a, a good cause? You might be thinking, what could I give to? Well, I'd love to invite you this evening, if you are one of those people, if you do have the ability to give this evening, to think about donating the cost of a ticket to make this evening's concert possible and to make more music like this possible. There's a way you can do that. That's going to come up, up on the screen now. If you are in the UK, then you could give the cost of a ticket at £5 or £20 by looking at the information that's coming up on your screen below. You can simply text to give to one of these numbers with the information that's come up on your screen. Please do consider joining us to make this possible. Now, I'm about to say one more thing. One of the things that people say to me the most is, gosh, it must be amazing to play a part in this orchestra. It must be amazing to play the cello. It must be fantastic. What an experience to play the timpani. Bum, 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 bum. Well, I say to them, you can play a part too. You can play a part in making music like this evening possible because we have an array of partners that join with us, that give monthly to help this ministry function and to see it thrive and they have helped to make every note of this evening possible. And as we head into the 50th anniversary of the All Souls Orchestra next year in 2022, we're looking for 500 partners that would join with us to support us, to help to make music and hope possible. So whether you're around the world or within the UK, wherever you are, you can visit our website, allsoulsmusic.org slash donate. And please consider either giving a one-off donation of any amount or becoming a monthly partner to join with us to help combine music and hope together. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Well, we're going to carry on now with making our music possible. We're going to continue worshipping, so I'm going to hand over to Geraldine, who's going to tell us more about our next piece. Thank you, Michael. You, God, are rich in love and you're slow to anger. Your name is great and your heart is kind. You may recognize the words from our next song. So won't you join together with us as we join with Matt Redman in singing, Bless the Lord, Oh, my soul. Sing like 
time has come Still my soul will sing your praise unending Ten thousand years and then forever more Yes, on that We'll worship your holy name. We'll sing like never before. Well, in a year where we haven't been able to sing together in a large group, and we're still not able to here in the UK, it's exciting to think of that day when we one day will sing together throughout all eternity together with God and God's family. Well, I'd like to express my thanks to end this concert to everyone seen and unseen that's made this evening possible. We've got a huge group of technicians behind this camera that you don't even get to see. So let's give a big round of applause to everyone who's been involved this evening. Whee! Thank you. <laughs> And our guest artists, Joanne McGann, Noel Robinson, Geraldine Latty, Wren Collective, and Matt Redman. It's been wonderful. And now, what we'd love to say, though, is it wouldn't have been the same without all of you watching at home, all around the world, wherever you've been watching from. We do hope that you've enjoyed this evening and that the message of togetherness through God, through Jesus dying on the cross for us, and that transforming our relationships with one another would have been, would stay with you after this concert. Well, taking this experience beyond this evening, you can watch this concert again with friends, you can watch it with family. Why not share the link for this concert? Share it with your neighbor that you might have got to know throughout lockdown. And uh, 
we'd love to invite you, if you're hearing about the Christian faith for the first time this evening, if you'd like to explore Christianity further, you can visit allsouls.org slash explore. And if you've really enjoyed the music and you'd love to be in the room, you'd love to experience it in person, we're going to be at the Royal Albert Hall for prom praise next year on May the 14th. So put that date in your diary. We hope tickets will be on sale very soon. So keep an eye out on our website, allsoulsmusic.org, and subscribe to this YouTube channel below. You can click subscribe button and you can be kept up to date with all of the things that we'll be doing over the next year, including Prom Praise 2022. Well, I'm gonna end this evening together with you with a wonderful tune, Old Lang Syne. It's in the middle of the hottest summer that you can possibly imagine. I mean, I'm absolutely sweating here. And we thought, well, New Year's Eve, Old Lang Syne sounds like the right tune to end with. But the reason we picked it is because it's a familiar tune to everyone watching. And we love the words that Michael Bourne, a former rector of All Souls, penned to this marvelous tune. We worship God in harmony. And I love the final verse that Michael wrote, especially after a year where we've heard the refrain of Vera Lynn singing, we'll meet again. Listen to these wonderful words. One day, we'll see him face to face. We'll see Jesus face to face. To him, we'll bow the knee. We'll never say goodbye again. The best is yet to be. Thank you for joining us this evening for Prom Praise Together. And let's sing together in your homes. Join with one another. If you're able to, why not link arms like New Year's Eve? And let's sing all as one. Yeah.